The question, what is an operating system, doesn't really have a single useful answer. Too many different kinds of software fall under that label. Your computer and your phone each have an operating system, but so does your car, your television, and even your microwave. Anything you use that includes a computer also includes an operating system. So let's simplify a bit, and only consider the operating systems that would run on your laptop or desktop computer. Ah, nice and simple. Until my brief search on Amazon turns up at least eight different textbooks on these kind of operating systems. Oh dear, I may have overreached with the title of the video. Just pretend it says, a few interesting things about consumer operating systems explained in what detail is possible in a short YouTube video. <sighs> okay, onward. To begin, an example to show how operating systems make writing software easier. Let's say we want to make a program that plays music. I will call it BoomTune. Now to play music, BoomTune is going to use a bunch of different parts of the computer. The sound card and the speakers to make sound, the hard drive to store music files, the graphics card and screen to display stuff to the user, and maybe other parts too. But for each of these parts, someone's computer could have one of hundreds of different versions. Some might be older, or manufactured by different companies, or just work slightly differently. We want lots of people to use BoomTune, so we need to make sure it works with as many versions of all these parts as possible. But we're on a budget, and there's no way we can afford to make a dozen different versions of BoomTune, let alone the hundreds we would actually need. Our fledgling software enterprise is doomed! No! Not so fast. Here's where the operating system comes to the rescue. It hides all the nasty details of those different parts, so we only need to make a version of BoomTune for each different operating system. And there are a lot fewer operating systems than sound cards. How do these details get hidden? Operating systems hide differences in computer parts by using a bunch of specialized computer programs called drivers. No, not those drivers. Not those either. Oh, come on! Yes, those! Each driver helps a specific computer part work with a specific operating system. The people who manufacture the computer parts are the ones who create the drivers for those parts. This way, an operating system can provide a predictable, unified environment for anyone developing new programs. BoomTune is back on track! Okay, so operating systems make it easier to create software. They are also in charge of making programs play nice with each other while running as fast as possible. Programs generally do their work, also called computation, on a computer's main microchip called the Central Processing Unit, or CPU. For example, when Chrome goes to play the music video for Shake It Off, it first needs to process and decompress the data it's getting from YouTube, and it will use the CPU to do so. Once this is complete, the browser needs to send that data to the graphics card and the sound card, via the drivers for those cards, so we can enjoy Taylor's award-winning single. While this data is being sent, Chrome is not using the CPU, but is busy doing input-output, or I.O., in this case, outputting sound and graphics. If Chrome's the only program running, then it's no big deal if the CPU sits around twiddling its metaphorical thumbs while this output takes place. But let's say we have some other programs running as well. Now, there are two things we'd really like to be true. First, we don't want any one program hogging the CPU all to itself and preventing the other programs from getting anything done. Second, we want to use the CPU to its full potential. This means it shouldn't ever be idle when there's a program with work to be done. It turns out, the operating system can take care of both of these by doing something called scheduling. This basically means keeping a schedule for the CPU and deciding which program is using it and when. In fact, the operating system is likely to swap programs on and off the CPU very rapidly. This could be tenths, hundreds, or even thousands of a second. So while Chrome is busy outputting sound and graphics to bring upbeat pop to our eyes and ears, the operating system can give were to turn on the CPU. The programs themselves know nothing about this. The operating system provides them with the illusion that they are the only program using the CPU. Thanks to this scheduling, no program freezes because it's left off the CPU forever, and we get the most efficient use out of the CPU by keeping it always busy. Of course, in today's computers, you will find not one CPU, but several. This complicates the picture, but a lot of the basic ideas are the same. There's a whole lot more to talk about when it comes to operating systems. Remember all those textbooks? But I'll leave off here for now. Thanks for watching.